Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Yes, it's been quite a while since the last video, which is because of several reasons. One you can see right behind me, I have enlarged my work surface for quite a bit. I'm going to go to the side, you can see I have built another desk right beside my usual work desk, which is mainly because I felt somehow a little bit cramped in between these uh, big shelves that were there before and the shelf which is on the other side where the camera is standing right now. So I decided to get rid of this shelf and that shelf and this cupboard that was uh, in between and enlarge the work surface for quite a bit, which is actually really nice and uh, it was quite cheap also. I got this work surface for 20 euros and all other stuff where I uh, placed it onto the feeds and so on I just had lying around so it was basically a no-brainer. And now I have quite a bit more place to place new stuff like for example new power supplies or maybe in this space I could think of a big old tectronics oscilloscope we will see. I have some of those in the attic staying around and waiting to be restored. However, what I wanted to do in this video is basically talk a bit about salvaging parts with you. Some people see this very critical in the way that you are destroying stuff that is still good, which I, yes, I see the point in there. I, for myself, would never ever uh, disassemble a Tektronix scope. That was actually the reason why I started collecting those things. Um, I have I have had one of those old scopes. It was a 465 if I recall correctly, which I had laying around for quite some time, not using it at all. So I donated it to someone where I lived before, uh, saying that I want him to use it, but no, he just ripped out the tubes and threw the, the thing to the garbage. Sometimes later I found this out and I was really, really not amused about this and I started collecting those things. However, some other things I can really, without any problem, destroy. For example, let's take a look. I have a big box of stuff standing around and I guess everyone... Uh, don't drop! Don't break! I guess everyone who is tinkering with electronics has one of those boxes staying around in some corner uh, where there's just accumulating a whole bunch of stuff that you want to take to bits and uh, salvage some parts out of it somewhere in the future. So I thought well, this could be in quite an interesting project to go through this whole stuff and other stuff I have standing around. For example, this old piece of test equipment. Nobody knows what it is. I don't know either, so... And nobody wants it. So I have no concerns taking that to parts as I offered it even for free and nobody wanted that thing. So we can see what we can salvage from this. So I thought, well, why not start taking stuff to bits from this box and other places I have in my lab and see what we can salvage out of this. I will try to cover different aspects of the whole salvaging stuff. Uh, as, you keep, as you have to keep in mind, we are living in 2017. You can just go to AliExpress and buy 3000 resistors for 5 euros. So there is no point in salvaging resistors as you did in the early days. I remember my father telling me that uh, he gave my mother a whole bunch of old, uh, old PCBs from video recorders and television sets and stuff like this and told her to desolder every single resistor and sort it into his little drawer cabinets. You wouldn't do stuff like this today anymore as resistors, capacitors and stuff like this is so dirt cheap you can buy it new. But there are some interesting parts you can salvage and I think we should dive right into this. 
So for today's salvaging party, I chose two JVC car stereos. Both of them had a problem with the CD laser, so I think it is quite acceptable to salvage those. And yes, I guess we can take a look inside, see a bit how they work, and maybe we find the one or the other part that is quite interesting to salvage. So, let's dig right into this. So, here we have the... Oh, let's get this out of the way. This is a project I'm working on right now. It's just a piece of protoboard. I guess everyone knows that. It's just a project I'm working on. So, maybe I will tell you about this in a later episode. But now, get, let's get into those two. All right, let me start my PC in the meantime. By the way, I'm using the PC most of the time right now to look up any data sheets I may, find, I may need. Um, and I guess this will be needed, as I can't remember every part on the earth. And we will most definitely find some parts inside here that we cannot identify. So I start by unscrewing the screws for the front cover and the back cover, but I don't see any screws for the top, so it should just snap off, and yes it does. Just need some force, I guess. Yeah, it's just clipped in place. So let's remove that. Um, if you don't intend to rebuild a whole caster for yourself, you can just get rid of those cases. Nobody needs them. At least I don't. This is not the right side. I wanted the opposite side. So ah, there are some screws. Let's get rid of those. Oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't notice this. This is a one-piece chassis. You can see that it's going around the corner. So we have to get rid of this PCB to assess any potentially interesting stuff inside. This whole surface mount stuff is really hard to salvage, as you can imagine. So. Most of the time it's not even worth bothering with it because, well, do you want to t look up every single of those small transistors? Well, I don't. And I wouldn't recommend it to you as those are dirt cheap today. Uh, what could be interesting are those big ICs. If they aren't any special stuff like this, for example, which is the main controller, I guess. And it is some special part from Panasonic. This also, maybe the display driver or whatever. But those two parts could be worth looking up and those, maybe they are operational amplifiers or whatever. We can take a look what this is. So I unscrewed this and I'm going to unscrew the back panel as well as I think that the whole PCB is held in place from that. If you are salvaging parts you don't have to be so well so careful <laughs> as you don't have any intention to rebuild it in a later time, so just screw out everything you want and get rid of the screws or keep them if you need them. I for myself have so many screws lying around that I don't keep them anymore. I did before, but as I said, I already collected so much screws, I don't even know where to put them anymore. That's better. Let's get rid of this and we can have a first peek inside. 
Okay, this heatsink is also attached to this whole assembly, so I guess we have to unclip the front cover at first, but well, let's get rid of this. We can take a look inside this later. I think, yes, that was it. Wonderful! Let's put this aside first and take a look at the mechanical part. Here we have the complete CD assembly. I zoom in a bit for you so that you can see it better. And if you are into mechanics, you can salvage quite a lot out of these. Let's unscrew this connector panel first. And that's it. This can be put away. Here we have the whole CD assembly on the bottom side, which is actually the top side. So you can see this is the arm which catches the CD and holds it down so that it doesn't lift up while being played. Um, let's see, how can we get deeper into this? I guess we have to unscrew those small screws at the sides. Small screws can be sometimes helpful, so I guess I won't discard those. Let me just get a suitable container for that. It's quite common to lose those small screws in any project, so I keep very small screws replace some that I lost. And that's it. Discard this. Let's see. There does not seem to be anything from interest on this lever, so away with that. I should not throw that onto my project. That is not the wisest thing I have ever done. What is also quite nice to keep are those springs. You always need string springs like those. And if not now, you will definitely come to a place where you need something like this. A nice attention to detail. Do you see those four springs at the sides? This is holding the whole thing quite off free hanging so that any bumps the car drives over doesn't affect the CD reading all too much. Let's unhook those. And also these bumpers. Not quite sure how I'm... Ah, just putting it out. This looks somehow strange. Wiggle wiggle. I don't think that I will keep those. And this looks so wrong in so many ways. But I have to admit, it's quite fun poking it. So, this is the way those things are intended to be placed. And these, oh, these studs here just go right into there and get a shockproof mounting. Interesting, but we don't need this. So, at least I don't. If you use something like that, please keep it. Let's get these springs out. And let's see what we have in here. Let's first get this wire harness out of the way. And let's see. 
this seems to be a position switch. Yes, it is. It's a quite small position switch. As you can see, this lever just connects those two parts. If you have any use for such a small switch, it's quite a nice find. I personally don't, so this goes to the trash, because I have many of those. So, next we have, again, a small screw, which holds in this linear assembly. You could reuse this whole linear assembly if you have a special purpose for it. I, for myself, have used an assembly like this once for a project I did where I built a transformer winding station and this linear assembly was used to position uh, the wire at the winding uh, bobbin so could be used it's quite stiff and there's no uh, play in the rod at least not a whole lot as you can see, if I place it at the outmost position, I don't think you can see it, but there's not very much play in this. Right now I don't need it, so this gets discarded. You could disassemble the whole laser assembly if you want to. Uh, keep in mind from CD lasers, they are infrared light, you can't see it, so it's not suitable for laser pointers. But if you want to build a sensor and have a corresponding laser uh, diode, which could be found in here also, this could be quite useful. Next we have quite a whole bunch of very small Yes, whoops, Allah. Well, that flew away. We have a whole bunch of small gears and wheels and stuff like this. This is always nice to keep. I personally keep those in a big box, so I will try to leave them out without letting them fly through the air. And I will definitely keep those. You can always use wheels like this to build small motor assemblies. Uh, yay, I bent my pliers. This was not intended. Please wait, rebending process. Well, that's <laughs> better than nothing, I guess. Uh, by the way, if you need the pliers like those, they are really sharp and nice. I love them. They are very inexpensive if you buy them from China, uh, even though they are made in Japan, at least it's written on there. I love those pliers. Uh, if I remember, I will provide a link for you to where to get those. Sometimes it's quite hard to get those gears out, but as you will see, you are going to find many of those in different gears, uh, in, in different but you will find many of those in different electronic devices, so it's not too bad that you, when you, when you uh, can't get some of them out, as I did here. If I try to pry those out, I'm most definitely going to break them. So, oh, they will stay inside. Next one, we have a small motor, which I can't unscrew with this screwdriver. So let's take that one. With those motors, you should keep the corresponding screws. And that's a real nice small motor. It is a... What is it? It is a 5 volt motor. So it can be used in micro microcontroller projects, as this is a really small one. You can use it for many, many things. Even... Uh, most of all, if, if it has a, uh, 
what is it called in English? I'm not quite sure. A gear like this. So definitely worth keeping. Next we have again some springs. Uh, the spring is gone, so no spring for me today. And a bit bigger spring, so keep that. There's another one inside here. And that is a compression spring, so it's not working from being pulled, but more from being compressed, like this. That is always nice to keep even if you don't need any more uh, expansion springs as those compression ones are quite difficult to come by. And the last thing I'm going to get out of here, at least I'm trying to, is the motor from the actual CD which spins it. As you saw, I just pried this piece of plastic away since I'm not going to use it for anything. I don't need that. Oh, that was a great throw. Also, those very specialized gears, those are most certainly for the eject mechanism, so this is of no use for me. If you have a purpose for those, by all means, keep them. And as before, place those tiny screws back in the motor. You will be very angry if you lose those screws, get a motor or use for those motors, and dust the screws. It would be very bad. So, the rest of this assembly I personally don't need, so this is going to the trash. Next, we have the display assembly. Just being a bit gentle, trying to open this, as you don't want to break the display itself. Sometimes they can be reused, sometimes they can't. Plastic stuff flying all over the shop. So, when the knob is positioned, it's always hard to get out, so I'm levering it out. If you want, you can keep knobs like those. This one is damaged. You can see this uh, discoloration here. The chrome finish is uh, destroyed in this place, so away with that. And here we have the outer shell. Could potentially keep stuff like this if you want to make a uh, four way navigation uh, control in any device you're going to build. Here we have the display. It's really nice, it is encapsulated in a metal frame, which makes it quite robust. And we have the. Are they screwed in? I don't think so. We have those small clicky buttons. Ah, it was glued, okay. Here we have the push buttons, the plastic push buttons. Again, trash. But here we can salvage quite a bit. You could, or should, if you are into uh, stuff like this, definitely salvage those small buttons. They are really nice and 25 cents a piece as those are these really small ones. Um, definitely worth keeping those. Also, it is a good idea to keep the rotary encoder and you have a infrared sensor, which I didn't notice that this radio had infrared remote control, interesting. So, infrared sensor, definitely worth keeping. Rotary encoder, buttons, always nice. The display itself, I doubt that this can be controlled in an easy way. Let's look under it. I guess that it will be one of those zebra strip ones. If it is, don't bother. You can buy cheap displays from China uh, for way 
easier controlling as those generic stuff where you wouldn't find any data sheet at all. So let's see. Yes, it's it's one of those zebra stirred ones. I'm going to show it you. So you see there's no obvious connection between the display itself and the PCB. It just leaves us off. The connection is made at this strip here. You can see there are carbon pads that go all over the shop to those wires here, which connect to this controller IC. The controller IC is a PT6523LQ and I doubt that we find any data sheet for that. Maybe we do, maybe I'm mistaken and this could be easily controlled but well I don't think so. So on the display itself there's a similar strip around here and this is basically a conductive material, some kind of conductive rubber, which is separated by non-conductive rubber. And every conductive part presses on one of those uh, carbon tracks so that the display gets its connections. Let's disassemble this just for fun. Look inside how it's built. If we can get inside, we should be. Yes, we can first pry it out of this metal frame. I already destroyed it. At least it's, oh no, it's, <laughs> it's uh, electrostatic. Yes, that's interesting. When you rub around this conductive metal stuff, you sometimes get uh, segments to light up, but uh, it's really hard to see on camera. However, the actual display itself is this part here. So you can see just the glass with the LCD crystals. Oh, and right now we have a, you see this, uh, this one Right, that is right now active and I just swished over the conductive material and it is gone. It's quite sensitive those LCDs. And this conductive rubber is also just glued onto here so this is the electrical connection to the panel itself. Quite interesting, but not of any use for us. What you could keep is this light separation unit or distribution unit if you want to make some kind of small bar of light. I don't know, maybe you find a use for this. And also you can keep the LEDs but either way, they, those are cheap as hell nowadays, so I wouldn't really bother desoldering those. I will definitely keep the rotary encoder for myself and some of the knobs. Not all uh, the push buttons. Not all push buttons, but some. I guess I will salvage this row here as those most of the time got no use, I guess. And last but not least, we have the main PCB. Here we have some strange connector for, what is this? It's a microphone jack. Hmm. It is called CN761. Well, that says so much. Just trying to disconnect that. Such a connector could be useful, if, uh, especially if you think that this is not got any use at all. Is it a corresponding three and a half millimeter jack? Yes, it is. So I'll keep that. It's a nice small shielded cable. Could be of some use. Next, 
we have a small PCB mounted upside down. Are those connectors? I'm not sure. I don't think they are. No, they are not. Let's see what have we here. We have an IC with an unknown type number. Hmm. Don't know what that PCB is supposed to be. What you could salvage from this PCB is definitely some capacitors if you want. As I said, they are dirt cheap today to buy in masses. But if you want to salvage them, why not? It's always nice to have some of those at hand, even especially if you uh, consider how small they are. I like those small but fat caps like those. It's just really shallow but more bulky. I will definitely salvage some of those. Also, we have two oscillators or uh, crystals. One is, what is that? 433 megahertz, I guess. And this one is KDS 6L. I don't recall that from the top of my mind, but I'm going to unsolder this to desolder this one and this uh, crystal can always be quite nice to use. Right here we have the tuner assembly. I personally am not an RF guy but if you are you should definitely desolder that in this row. Inside here you have some nice RF stuff, a filter and two I guess those are caps. Yes they are. Those are capacitors which can be adjusted and I guess those are resonators, three pin resonators, could be. Also another quartz, a crystal D102K6C, have to look that up. Also some small inductors, so if you are into RF, could be interesting to salvage. Also we have a TDA7540D. I guess that is a PLLIC or something like this, so could be nice. These small capacitors could be quite interesting too. They are 470 nanofarad. And this is a quite common value, should be kept in my opinion. Also this really thin but very long JVC cap, JVC branded cap, I've never seen something like this. It is 2700 microfarads at 60 volt, 16 volts, so definitely worth keeping. As if the caps get bigger, they got more expensive, and 16 volt at 2700 microfarad can be around 50 cents a peach. A peach, 15 cents each. We're not talking about peaches right now. So, last stuff common mode choke. No, it's just a single coil. If you need a big coil or a plastic bobbin, it could be an interest of interest for you. Also a big chunky diode. This is a... I can't read it. And the last thing we are going to look at are those two ICs. They are most probably hybrid modules for audio amplification. So let's take a look. I'm just going to cut this metal shield away since I'm not needing that. This one is a LA47201. I'm going to have to look that up. But I guess it is the power amplifier. It most probably is. And this one is a AN80T71. Not quite sure about that. I guess it could be something with the power regulation. Have to look those up. But if they are amplifier ICs, it is definitely worth salvaging them. Just because they are quite expensive if you buy them alone. Those uh, hybrid ICs. And it is really 
totally easy to build a small portable audio amplifier with those. So that would be a nice project for a beginner to do. So since this video has already been quite long, I decided to stop at this place and leave the other radio for a later time. There will be most certainly uh, some similar parts inside which we can salvage, but as this is another model, we could be either disappointed or surprised by way more stuff or even nothing to salvage at all. So we will see. Today from this JVC KD G421 we salvaged quite some nice parts which involve two small sweet motors and some corresponding gears from this display PCB we got those nice clicky switches, a rotary encoder and also an infrared sensor and if you want the LEDs and from the main PCB I will definitely salvage those small but fat bulky caps the two uh, hybrid ICs, the big filter cap and what else? Oh yes, the crystals those two, one inside here, here's another resonator. Yes, it is a resonator. And maybe some of the RF stuff, I'm not quite sure about that right now. But, all in all, quite decent for stuff that would otherwise be thrown into the garbage. And dirty fingers from the heatsink compound. Yeah. So, what is that sound right now? In every single video I take in the last time, any one of those neighbors is doing stuff and is making noises. They don't like it when I take videos. However, if you enjoyed this episode of Tinker Tubes Lab, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, give me a big thumbs up and share the video with your friends. Also, I hope to see you the next time back here in Tinker Tubes Lab. Until then, goodbye.